This is a video that I wanted to make from the beginning, but didn't have the courage to do it. It's a video about some personal struggles that I had in my life, and it's a video about a person that I loved very much who passed away unexpectedly. I'm talking about my wife. Her name was Sheila. And this video is really dedicated to helping someone else who might have a Sheila, who is in the same situation as we were in. Now, I wasn't able to help my Sheila as far as getting her well. So this video is dedicated to trying to help someone else who might be in my situation. Uh, here's a picture of my Sheila. And she was young and happy and pretty. She was a force to be reckoned with, believe me. She was full of energy and funny to the core. She had a beautiful smile and a laugh that lit up the room. And more than anything, she loved kids. But something strange started to happen to her several years after this picture was taken. She started to have panic attacks and anxiety nightmares and paranoia, severe headaches that would last for a couple days. It started slow at first, a few strange and out of character behaviors, angry outbursts that cut off relationships with family and friends, missing work. But one day the bottom fell out and her behavior went way over the top. And from that day on, her life and our life together was never the same. Doctors, medications, therapies became a way of life for us. We became isolated because I protected her from others. I didn't want them to see how sick she was or to be offended by her behavior. We sought out medical treatment and went to the so-called professionals and they, of course, medicated her to the point where most of her bad behaviors went away. And most of her personality went away too. She gained a tremendous amount of weight, which these medications are notorious for causing. And she was really not the same person I met years before. She had periods where she was more normal, more like her old self. But basically not that same energetic, happy person. Uh, she almost never laughed unless she was able to self-medicate. You know, I say this not to put her down. I'm not putting her down for this aberrant behavior. I learned, and many of you know who deal with mental illness, that people with mental illness tend to try to find any way they can, any way, to feel normal again so that they can interact with people and they can laugh and they can go out in public without panic attacks. And sometimes they turn to prescription drugs or alcohol or they turn to some kind of thing that we don't approve of as a society to try to function more properly. And Sheila, of course, realizes it's a problem and, and stopped doing that for the most part. But occasionally, people with mental illness, they do do these things. But that's not really what this video is about. The reason I'm making this video is that people who are in a dark, fearful place, they need help. And their families need help. And I feel like I let Sheila down because I didn't know a lot of the things that I know now. And I want to give those things to you. It may help you, may not. But to me, if I'd had this information, my outcome might have been different. I'm not a doctor. I'm not trained in any medical field. I'm just a working class guy who's lived this life and done a lot of research on it. And what I'm about to advise you is not a risk to your health whatsoever. In fact, I believe it could be a salvation for some of you. I am certainly not advising anyone to stop their medication without the help of a trained, licensed medical professional. People with mental illness, if they stop their medication without the aid of a trained medical professional, they are risking suicide. 
they are risking being put in a mental institution. Do not ever stop your medication without the aid of a medical professional, licensed, a licensed medical professional. Mental illness is such a mysterious and complicated thing, it takes over the lives of people who suffer from it and the people who care for them. It's so complicated that we automatically think the treatment for it must also be very complicated. But I want to tell you something that's not so complicated. I want to tell you a couple little quick stories. The first story is about British sailors in the 1800s. Did you know the British Navy had a terrible disease in their Navy in the 1800s? The disease was called scurvy. And it was a disease that caused health problems from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. But come to find out, it was just a simple vitamin C deficiency. By adding a little lime or lemon juice to the sailor's rum ration, or their grog, the disease just went away, or never occurred to start with. I'm going to talk to you about just three vitamin deficiencies that could cause severe system-wide health problems. I'm doing this to point out the complicated body-wide diseases that are sometimes caused by a very simple nutritional deficiency. Now, I'm not talking about these diseases being an issue. I'm talking about them so you'll understand that even a small nutritional deficiency can cause widespread body problems. So the first one is scurvy, of course. And scurvy is simply a lack of vitamin C. But being deficient in this one vitamin can cause you to have problems all over your body. Severe problems in the mind with anxiety and irritability, in the mouth with your gums and loosening teeth, in the bones with severe bone pain, in the skin with rashes and little red dots, rash dots, large purple bruise-like patches on your, on your extremities. Another vitamin dis, uh, disease is beriberi, and it's simply a vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency. But, just like scurvy, it causes body-wide health problems. It causes emotional problems, mental confusion, swelling of the arms and legs, weakness, tingling in the hands and feet, and an irregular heartbeat. Pellagra is another simple vitamin deficiency. It's caused by not getting enough niacin, and that's one of the B vitamins, or tryptophan, which is an amino acid, a building block of a protein. Pellagra is the most interesting for my purposes here because Pellagra causes psychiatric problems such as anxiety, rapid mood changes, delusions, hallucinations, headaches, and fainting. It's also associated with a bone disease called osteoporosis, which causes your bones to become weak and brittle. Now, why in the world would I tell you people about this stuff, these, these dis deficiency diseases? I'm telling you this because when it comes to mental problems, most of us have mixed up ideas. When someone is sick physically, we automatically think of how to treat them with medicine. But when someone has anxiety or mood swings or paranoia, or angry outbursts, we think it's a spiritual problem. We consciously know it's a medical issue. You know, we know that in our mind. But in our heart and in our deepest feelings, we think we just have something wrong with a person's soul. It's a behavioral problem. It's a spiritual problem. But really, it's a physical problem. But these deficiency diseases let us know that having poor nutrition can cause problems all over your body, both mental and physical. You know, there's a site here on the internet, which I hope you guys will visit. You can read all about people who have cured themselves by simply changing their diet, and they wrote their story down and published it online. It's at a place called the Ancestral Weight Loss Registry. And you can read their stories from real people who've cured themselves of irritable bowel syndrome, skin problems of every stripe and imagination, 
joint pain. I'm one that cured myself of that. And all kinds of different system-wide problems by simply changing the food that they ate. Now listen, you're, you're caring for someone who's mentally ill. And I've been in your situation. And believe me, Sheila and I, we tried all the medications. And while they stopped almost all of Sheila's bad behavior, her abnormal behaviors, they did not improve her life. No one explained to me that mental illness could be a nutritional problem. No one. Now, I'm not saying mental illness is a nutritional problem. I'm saying it could be. And, I, and believe me, this is not a far-fetched idea. Just being deficient in one or two things can cause a host of problems, and people today do not eat the most nutritious food anyway. Did you know even people who are 100 pounds overweight could be starving to death for nutrition? Hunger is nature's way of letting us know we need nutrition. And guess who is hungry all the time? The same people who have hundreds of thousands of extra calories in the form of belly fat hanging around their belly. And yet they're hungry. Hugely fat and still hungry all the time. For more about that, watch my Butter Makes Your Pants Fall Off video. Listen, these people are hungry because they're not getting the nutrition their body needs. And they will remain hungry until they get it. No matter how many calories of junk food they stuff themselves with, until they eat what their body needs, they will remain hungry, sick, and in pain. And of course, there's those who never get fat, no matter what they eat. They can and often are deficient in vitamins and minerals too, and they will, be, can, they will not be fat, but they will remain sick and in pain and hungry and feeling bad, even though they don't get fat. So, you know, this is not a fat versus skinny problem. This is a nutritional problem. Listen, you people who are dealing with someone with a severe mental issue, you've tried what all the experts have told you, but it really hasn't solved your problem. It's, it's made it go down to where you can manage it, but it hasn't solved it. The person you love is medicated into submission, really. But that's not what you wanted for them. And it's certainly not what they want. They want to live. You know, even if they're suicidal, they wish they could live. You and they want to be well and happy. They want to live and you want them to live. You've saved your loved one's life, your, their existence. But the life and the personality of that person you love is really gone. You haven't been able to save that part. What do you have to lose by using food as medicine? Once again, I'm not telling anyone to stop their medication. My Sheila stopped her medication without me knowing it one time, and it led to a bad situation for us, believe me. I'm telling you to find out about medical doctors who are using nutrition along with medicine to dramatically improve their own life because some of them are very sick or someone they love is very sick and they're helping their patients with this knowledge. This is not some far-fetched crazy idea. If taking a few vitamins can cure diseases like we just talked about, what could it do for your Sheila? If eating right has cured people of joint pain, and diabetes, and intestinal illnesses, what could it do for your Sheila's mental illness? Here online there's a uh, wonderful video from Dr. Terry Walls, and I'm going to have a link here so you can go to it. She's a doctor who has MS. And her condition had gotten so bad she was actually in one of those motorized chairs because she couldn't walk. She did the study and found out about nutrition. She has a program, a nutritional therapy program that's uh, geared towards helping people with MS. But guess what? I'll bet any nutritional therapy that treats the whole body could also help your Sheila or your Bob. Check her video out and learn just how much nutrition can change your life. Go and watch Dr. Mary Newport's video here on YouTube. She's a doctor who treats her husband's Alzheimer's with coconut oil and MCT oil and a carefully planned diet. And it's remarkable 
what this therapy has done for him. And I've heard from people, even on my uh, website, that has talked about the same therapy treatment for their relatives with Alzheimer's. These are two doctors, and there's many more, that have used nutrition to treat some of the most severe, severe conditions. Since my butter video came out, I've heard from people from all over the world. People who changed their diet and got rid of anxiety, depression, paranoia, delusions, suicidal thoughts. People who got rid of joint pain. I'm one of them. People who got rid of every symptom of diabetes by changing their diet. The list could go on and on. They did these things because food is medicine. And the best food is fat. The right kind of fat. Now there's some of you that's going to make fun of me for this video, and that's okay. It doesn't matter to me at all. No skin off my hind end at all. But there's someone out there who's done everything the doctors told him or her. And I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You've done everything the doctors told you to do. And, of course, it's helped the behaviors. But it's not solved your problem. You're desperate because you're losing your Sheila or your Bob. You're going to listen to me. And you're going to think food's medicine. You're going to watch these videos. You're going to get in contact with some of these doctors that knows what they're talking about. And you are going to save your Sheila's life. You really are. And the rest of the people out here that want to make fun of an old redneck from Tennessee telling them this stuff, they can kiss my butt. I don't care. But for you, I do care. I want you to do this. And let other people know about it too when it helps your Sheila. I couldn't save my Sheila. But if you're listening to me, there's still hope for you. And I'm hoping that you will do this investigation. Thank you very much. Goodbye.